Greetings and blessings, dear friends in the spirit 111. It is Eddie Luisi. How are you? I am calling this talk today a message of hope. I'm going to read something from a dear friend, Mark Maxwell, down in Nashville. This was a Facebook post on his page. I don't know if he created it himself or he copy pasted it, but I loved it, so I'm going to share it. Thanks, Mark. God is in the business of surprise endings. He is in the business of shocking turnarounds. God is in the business of redeeming what is bad and meant for evil and turning it into good. That is his promise to you today. That is his promise for 2020. A message of hope. So how are you, dear friends in the spirit? One, one, one. It is Saturday morning. I am recording this video. Uh, last week, I was in New York City, Times Square, Good Morning America. And if you looked at my regular page, Eddie Luisi, I did videos early in the morning coming out of the garage. And then after work, right in Times Square, I gave a little talk. And um, most of the time was pretty positive and some fun. And a lot of people enjoyed that. So if you haven't checked it out, please check it out. Um, Starting today, if nobody gets sick at work, I'll have the week off so I can rest and recoup and feel better. So let's backtrack, okay? So we had a really nice week, um, but as you know, this week is Holy Week, right? For a lot of uh, Christians, Passover, for our Jewish friends. So yesterday was Good Friday, and a couple things happened. So I'm going to just chit chat with that and then I'm going to backtrack a little bit but remember a message of hope okay so what I wrote a message of hope <laughs> so during during this time that we're going through we have a, a limited crew at Good Morning America and we usually used to have our meetings downstairs in a small studio all gathered around now we have our Meetings upstairs, it's a really big studio, and we're all spread 10 feet away. We have our mask on. And it's, it's, we have kind of like, we developed a little place where we all sit. So I sit in between Eric and Brad, uh, but for some reason, Brad was a little closer. So when I sat down, I said, move over. I said, and he said, what's the deal? I said, come on, man. It's like church. It's like when you're sitting... When you go to church, you have one spot in the pew that's yours. And if somebody's like too close or in it, you give them that, that evil eye, right? So he, he kind of moved over. And then I, and I said, you know, don't you know, like church? He goes, I don't go to church. And then some other young lady, Sarah, said, Subway, Subway, Subway. <laughs> so I haven't been in Subway in a long time. But I guess certain people that commute on a regular basis or trains have their spot on the train. So I thought that was fun. I'm going to give you a little humor for Good Friday. Another dear friend, Austin Vela, um, on Facebook. He, he has his whole podcast, does blogs and videos and all that sort of stuff. He has his own show called The Austin Show. And he private messaged me Thursday night, said, hey, would you like to be a guest on my show Friday? I said, yeah. I said, and I'll stand outside middle of Times Square. So I go out to Times Square and it's cold, and and it's pretty desolate. I had one one homeless person come up and they asked me for food. So I went in my bag and I said, I have this, I have that. And he said, I'll take an apple. So I ran out, take my apple. Um, but this is what he wrote to me prior to the interview. I'm hoping to talk about Good Friday, positive things you're observing in your community. I want to talk about Friends in the Spirit 111 and introduce you as stage manager to the stars with GMA. I feel like so much hurt, fear, and negativity is highlighted in our world. So I'm hoping to bring a message of hope and love while encouraging our neighbors to come together. So we, we attempted several times and I saw him on, on Facebook Live and I was texting and messaging, but he couldn't get the video up. So hopefully next Friday we're going to do a live video. So I'll be on that. But love you, brother. Keep up uh, what you're doing. God bless you. Um, 
So, you know, on a, on a daily basis, I go to the Marian Shrine and I, I do a nice little walk there. And I do a walk, a meditation. Sometimes I listen to music. Sometimes it's quiet. I just hear the breeze. So I got this um, private message from Jessica from um, the River Church that I used to attend years and years ago. Great place. Um, if you're a Christian and you want some really good preaching and good fellowship and great music, and go to the river in Pearl River. But she wrote to me, Hi, Eddie. I just wanted to let you know I've been finding a lot of comfort in your post during this time of isolation. My six-year-old son and I took... My six-year-old son and I went up to the Marian Shrine after you mentioned it. He really loved it. I had been praying about how to teach him about Easter. He hasn't been interested in learning about it from a book. He says he wants to bring the whole family there. It was a great way to also talk to him about God's peace because it is so peaceful there. Thank you, Jessica. So now I come home, see my family. Uh, I was gonna say hugs and kisses. We're, we're, we're kind of a little distance, but I am in New York City. But um, so after I eat a little lunch and stuff, uh, I was laying in bed and, oh, I was reading a book. Let me show you the book first and then, and then we'll backstory. All right, Cliff Falls, right? This is my dear friend, C.B. Scheip. S H I E P E. Sheep. Sheep. I think it's sheep. Sounds like a sheep. Um, like a lot of you know, in addition to this Facebook page, right? Friends in the Spirit 111. Lizzie and I, my wife, have Q the Spirit. We haven't really posted a lot on that, but we will eventually. And then I have my Eddie Luisi page. But then I have a lot of private message groups, uh, like four or five of them. And if you want to be part of one of those groups, Put a comment, say, I want to be in. Um, but I send out different prayers and reflections and different links and this and that. My friend Darren Joseph starts us off with a little daily reflection in the morning. But we're talking about Good Friday, and we're, we're going back and forth, a bunch of us in the media author um, group. And what does he do? He, he, he posts a little graphic uh, of his book with a quote. And the quote that he did, um, Clay stared at the gilded crucifix above the altar. It was hope taking its last breath. So I thought that was really cool, right? And I pressed it and put the heart sign and, and, and this and that. I go home, I'm resting in my bed, and I'm reading. I'm reading his book. And I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading. Then I, I turn and I say, ooh, I'm going to hit page 222. Now, you know, Friends in the Spirit 111, you know, I like numbers. And, and when I see certain numbers in succession, I feel like, okay, pay attention. God is talking to me. So I said, this is going to be a special page. So I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading. I get down to like the second paragraph at the very end. And on page 222, it says... Clay stared at the gilded crucifix above the altar. It was hope taking its last breath. Said, Whoa, I got chills because just earlier today he sends the quote. Then I go in my house and I'm laying down on my bed and I'm reading and the quote is there again. So what do I do? I Google search 222 angel numbers and this is what I get. Number 222 is reminding you to keep up the work you are doing as the evidence of your manifestations are coming to fruition. Number 222 is a message of faith and trust from your angels. Remember that nothing happens by chance. Everything happens for a reason. Maintain a positive attitude and you will find that everything will have positive results and you will receive abundant blessings in divine right timing. So now I, 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 I get little screenshots of that and I get a screenshot of the post that, that Cliff sent us earlier. 
I take a picture of the actual page of the book, and then I screenshot this and I send it to him. And um, I think he's out in California. And we met through through Facebook, through Friends in the Spirit. And we both wrote to each other like, wow, like God put us together in each other's lives for a certain reason. And dear Friends in the Spirit 111, a lot of you, a lot of you God put, um, if not all of you, <laughs> right? But there are some of you that we have special connections and some of you that I don't have a special one-on-one -on -one connection, but, but hopefully God put us all together. Friends in the Spirit 111 put us all together for a reason. And um, hope, a message of hope. Um, you know, last week, right, at Good Morning America, I was blessed um, through my dear friend Robin Roberts to get um, Gina and Vinny dear friends of Rescuing Families on the show on Good Morning America, a, a segment for them and all they're doing. And I just got a text just like a half hour ago from my dear friend Nas, who owns Karma Organics. And he, it was interesting, um, he also donated stuff last week out of the goodness of his heart, hand, hand sanitizers he sent to Mississippi and um, to a hospital there. But he was just blessed to have some of his products on The View. So two of my friends in two weeks got national exposure for what they're doing. And they're friends in the spirit. They're good people, good souls, helping others. And God is helping them. Remember last week? Be blessed and a blessing, right? Be a blessing to people and get blessed. You know, And, and you, we don't do good things. So good things come back to us. We just do good things because that's who we are, right? God is in us. and um, But blessings do come back, dear friends, in the spirit, and even nationally. Um, so God bless my friends. A message of hope. So I am going to read from One Spirit, Daily Practice, Sacred Reading, and Meditation. It's just a little paragraph. Whether it pleases us or not, each moment is a gift. No matter how unpleasant the wrapping, inside is something wonderful, excuse me, that life wants to give us. If we let it pass without opening it, we have missed something priceless. That was from Polly Barine Berens, Coming to Life. No matter how unpleasant the wrapping, inside is something wonderful that wants to give to us. If you believe in heaven, you believe in hell, you believe it's up there or down there, you believe that we live our own heaven and hell depending on how we respond to things. No matter how unpleasant the wrapping, inside is always something wonderful. Life is a gift no matter what's going on in your life. Surrender from science of mind. There's a little line here from Richard Bach. We pack up what we've learned so far and leave the familiar behind. No fun, that sharing separation, but somewhere within we must dimly know that saying goodbye to safety brings the only security we'll ever know. And from Ernest Holmes, Science of Mind, the soul must make a complete surrender of itself to spirit. The tale of Jumping Mouse is a powerful story of surrender. He began as an ordinary mouse scurrying through the prairie grass. But Mouse kept hearing the roar of rushing water, so he left the safety of his home and began his journey. He found the river and met Frog, who advised him to crouch down and then to jump as high as he could jump. When Mouse jumped, he saw the sacred mountains and as he descended, he fell into the river. Crawling out of the river, Mouse was furious that he was all wet. Frog asked, what did you see when you jumped? Mouse replied, I saw the sacred mountains. Frog replied, you have a new name now. It's Jumping Mouse. The story is a metaphor for our spiritual journey. Jumping Mouse can no longer creep as he did before. Now he jumps and he leaps. Like Jumping Mouse, when we commit to our spiritual journey, 
We can no longer creep through life. We must take the leap as we move forward. Jumping Mouse's glimpse of the sacred mountains instilled within him a need to go on and yet an go on yet another adventure to find his home. Along the way, he endured disappointment, fear, and even injury. But he finally made it to the sacred mountains. A letting go must occur, occur for us to arrive at the truth of ourselves. The more we let go, the more we can see the sacred mountains of home. And the affirmation, today I surrender and leap into the adventure of life. All right? Do you want to see your sacred mountains? This is a message of hope. A message of hope. Okay, so, you know, today I'm recording this on Saturday. So, for some people, it's called Holy Saturday at nighttime. It's the Easter Vigil. Tomorrow's Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday. Um, Good Friday was yesterday, Holy Thursday or Maundy Thursday. You know, I get many reflections that I read. I get some through through messages. I get some through Facebook. I get some through emails. I get some through websites. And some that I have the actual hard copy, the magazines, the books. So I printed out a few things um, for each day of Holy Week. And hopefully this is something that you could... Um, read, meditate on, and have a wonderful Easter Resurrection Sunday. This is received from Daily Word Unity. Serve. In service to others, I find my true self. The word Maundy loosely translates to commandment, and Maundy Thursday is named for the message Jesus gave his disciples in the upper room during the Last Supper. In John 13, 34, Jesus says, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should love one another. Before he gave this commandment, he washed his disciples' feet, saying in John 13, 15, For I have set an example that you also should do as I have done to you. I take these words to heart knowing, as Gandhi shared, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. I follow Jesus' example of service as well as his commandments. I serve others, finding the Christ present in everyone as I do. And from Proverbs 27:19. Just as water reflects the face, so one human heart reflects another. This is taken from, received from, three minutes a day, Christopher Books. My dear friend, Tony Rossi. Love you, Tony. Time to examine our motives. Jesus' last words before dying included a prayer of forgiveness for those who executed him. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. This outstanding gesture of pardon reveals the compassion of Jesus. It also illustrates how easy it is for men to perform unworthy deeds in the name of the highest causes. Among those who executed Jesus, at least some were acting in the name of defense of religion or the interests of public peace. Similar explanations have been given throughout history to justify persecutions, wars of aggressions, or restrictions on the rights of individuals and groups. During the celebration of Christ's death and resurrection, it is well to take stock of our motives. Are we purifying them in the light of the gospel's message of love? Or are we using high-sounding excuses to rationalize courses of actions that have little or nothing to do with the message of Jesus? From Luke 23, 46, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. 
and the prayer, Holy Spirit, help me to be open and honest in analyzing my intentions. This is great stuff, huh? I don't write this. I just find it and then I share it with you. But God, Holy Spirit, helps me gather all these papers. I have tons and tons of papers I put in my my purple folder, and then I, I go through it and I try to make a theme. And I read through and sometimes I find one line and I get a yellow highlighter, a message of hope. And that I, I found in one of the stories. And then it's interesting because it wasn't in my mind, but when I did, when I did um, Cliff's book and that one line was hope, I said, oh man, another connection. And I didn't have that connection yesterday. That just happened right now. So thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit. This is received from dailyword.com Unity. Forgive. I freely forgive all others and myself. During times when I struggled to forgive, I remembered the example of Jesus who asked for God to forgive those who crucified him. If I am feeling a pain too great for me to offer genuine forgiveness, I affirm that, in truth, the forgiving love of God is intended for everyone, no matter what they may have done. I remind myself that forgiveness is a process, and I am gentle and patient with myself as I continue to forgive. I practice self-forgiveness as I remember it is human nature to be more critical of ourselves than of others. God's love heals all sorrow and helps me to forgive myself, other people, and all situations. Nothing is beyond my ability to forgive because in God, nothing is unforgivable. As I practice forgiveness, I let go completely. And the prayer, no, this is um, actually the quote from the Bible, Luke 23, 34. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Let's just stop for a brief second. If you are a person out there that believes in heaven and hell, how could you believe in hell Nothing, when you, when you hear this, nothing is beyond my ability to forgive because in God, nothing is unforgivable. As I practice forgiveness, I let go completely. And Jesus says, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. So if you're forgiven in your humanness of whatever dumb things you have done or are doing or will do, then, then why would a God of, 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 of this world love? Why would a, 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 a spirit, an entity, a, a divineness put you on this earth for 80, 90 years and then all of a sudden you screw up and you're going to hell for eternity? Please think about that. Just think about that. I'm not trying to change your mind, but think about it. Pray about it. When you are feeling so down on yourself and something that you have done or, or something that you're doing right now or something that you might do in the future, forgive yourself. God loves you. God forgives you. And if you could stop before you're going to do something, right, before you're going to yell, before you're going to give somebody the finger while you're driving in the car, before you're going to steal something, before you're going to cheat, before you're going to lie, just stop, pause. Go into your heart, close your eyes, and just say, is that going to be the best decision that I could do right now? Right? And like I said many times, friends in the Spirit 101, Eddie Louisi is not perfect. <laughs> Eddie Louisi. And a long time ago, I remember my son Andrew. Um, he was into interfaith religions at Wake Forest, and then he got into different spiritualities. He went to Jerusalem. Um, Heavy duty, very philosophical, loving, smart young man, Andrew was. But a long time ago, he told me about um, Conversations with God book, really big book. And I know a lot of people are against it and stuff, but 
I read it and it's like, well, what if, what if this is really what God is saying? And, and I remember at that time, I took the word sin out of my life and I sinned less. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, once we have a human thought of something, oh, I'm doing this, it's a sin. Oh, I ate meat on Friday, it's a sin. Oh, I did this, I did that. You know, yesterday was Good Friday. I had a glass of wine. I had some some candy. Um, I had a little bite of chicken. I watched, you know, a movie. It, it, it's like, does God really want us to be, like, so perfect and and and... We're humans, right? But God is in my thought. God is in my, my mind. God is in my action. God is in my thoughts. All throughout the day, from the beginning of the day, waking up at 2.45 a.m., I'm sitting, reading, praying. I'm driving in my car. I'm praying. I stop by the chapel, even though it's closed, and I put my hand up and I say, an hour, Father. I get to work. I read meditations. I do a video outside and I talk about God, and I pray throughout the day. My, um, we were doing a story with, with um, Governor Andrew, Andrew Cuomo, and um, George Stephanopoulos was supposed to do it and the rem from his home, and the remote went down, so Michael Strahan had to do it. And he had three minutes to prep. His producer ran down with cards, and he's reading. And the whole time he's doing the interview, my hand is up, and I'm blessing him, and I'm praying for him. This is national TV. This is heavy duty interview. This, and he did it. It was scheduled on, on the rundown for five minutes. And the producers liked it so much, it extended seven, eight minutes. And I'm there praying for Michael quietly. And a couple times, you knew he, he felt better because it was going well. He looked at me and I gave him a little wink. And he gave me a wink too, off camera. Cueing the spirit, connecting. That's the things you do, folks. And if you want to fast also and you don't want to eat meat and you want to starve yourself and you want to do, okay, God bless you, okay? But have God in your life all the time. Pray to God, you know? And in moments when you're going to yell or do something really dumb or stupid, just stop and say, okay, God, <laughs> you know? This is a message of hope, right? Not a message of you going to hell and and, you know, and you got to do this and you got to do that. I believe God doesn't want anything. God doesn't need anything. God is God. What does God need me to do something? I need me to do something. When I act more like Jesus, when I love my neighbor, when I love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, when I do things like that, it makes me a better person makes me a better husband, makes me a better father, makes me a better son, makes me a better brother, makes me a better friend, makes me a better stage manager, makes me a better musician, and makes me a better person. For me, I don't think there's a God up there with eyeballs saying, you better do this. And God is here. God is us. God is in you and me. We make our heaven and hell right here on earth. So this is a message of hope, right? So whatever restrictions you have, God bless you, you know? And I used to be a church musician years and years ago and did all the triduum, did all the fasting. I don't do that anymore. I'm a friend in the spirit, one, one, one. God is, I have put myself into a new direction with, with divine blessings from God, but God's not saying, Ed, do this. I'm doing it myself, and it feels good. Okay, this is from Fast and Feast 2020. Unity again. Holy Saturday, I feast on renewal. I am in God's waiting room where transformation begins. Every part of my being has surrendered to the Christ within. I have crossed out all error thoughts. My soul gently waits in the stillness of my being. The old is gone, the new is yet to be. When steadfast, with steadfast faith I rest, knowing my spirit is being renewed. 
Through the power of prayer and my spiritual practices, I have let go of all thoughts of separation from the one presence. I affirm my oneness with God. I have done my work. I wait in the silence. My consciousness is clear. My heart is open to the new life bubbling within and ready to come forth as a new creation. I listen to the still, small voice that gently whispers something miraculous is occurring in my soul. My new life is springing forth. Right? Like the, the mouse jumping or springing forth. I am rising above the tombs of lack, limitations, and suffering. My mind is rising to Christ consciousness. I feast on the knowing that I am being renewed in body, mind, and soul. Resurrected from the tomb of self-pity, I delight in new creation that is unfolding. I am being renewed in spirit of truth. And that was given to us by Reverend Elizabeth Longo. She's a coach and minister consultant in South Florida. Okay, so this is a little something from Three Minutes a Day, Christopher Books, Easter Sunday. Hope you're enjoying this talk. I threw in a little bit of my personal stuff. I don't do a lot of that, but I did today. And when I just looked up, it was 31 minutes and 11 seconds, 111. So see, God affirms, God sees, I see. You have to be open to God's presence, to gifts, you have to have hope. Keep your eyes open, your ears open to everything. You know, because God is talking to us, guiding us, loving us. Just have to be open to it. And hopefully this talk is, is, is helping you too. And if you like it, share it. Share it with other people. If you are a minister, or if you run a church, if you're doing online, you know, live streams, share this. You know, it might help somebody. Look for God in ordinary places. Two of Jesus' followers were traveling to Emmaus on the first Easter when the risen Lord approached them and joined them in their journey. Unrecognized, he discussed the events of the last few days with them, explaining why it was necessary for the Christ to die and so enter into his glory. When they reached the village, the two invited Jesus to stay with them, which he did. Jesus liked to eat and drink. It's like, come on, manja, manja. Was Jesus Italian? St. Luke explains how the master broke bread and gave it to them, and how they suddenly recognized who their companion actually was. It's interesting, he broke bread. And in my video um, at Times Square, I had some matzo bread and I broke it for everybody. I'm Italian. I love bread. And I don't know. A lot of times I try to stay away from wheat because people say wheat isn't that good for you. But when I have it, I love it. <laughs> like the two disciples, we all tend to look for the Lord to act in grand and dramatic ways. Yet the events of everyday life are filled with his presence. Had we but the eyes to see. Didn't I just say that? A meal, a job to be done, a chance meeting on the street. All can be occasions for encountering God in our neighbor. Neighbors helping neighbors, rescuing families. Gene and Vinny. And from Luke 24, verses 31 to 32, their eyes were open and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? While he was opening the scriptures to us. And the prayer, Father, help us to realize that it is in each other that we find you. Father, help us to realize that it is in each other that we find you. So in this time of, of churches closed and you can't be in a church and you can't receive Holy Communion, 
we could find God in each other. And if you're with the family, that God is there in your family. If you're home alone, you have your internet friends, you have your Facebook friends, you have your friends in the spirit where you can find God. So feel free to to message me and comment and, and um, because God is everywhere. God is in friends in the spirit, one, one, one. And there's different, you know, a lot of these ministries that, that I read, they're doing a lot of online, you know, Zoom meetings and stuff like that. If any of you are part of any of these organizations that I'm talking about, please feel free to share this video on your site. Unlimited Supply, Joel and Victoria Osteen, Wake Up to Hope Devotional. And then I have one more prayer and I'm done. Excuse me. From Ephesians 1.19. And so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in working of his mighty strength. If someone had a thousand, oh, I love this. I read this several times. If someone had a thousand gallons of water to give you, but you only had a one gallon container, you wouldn't be able to receive what they had for you. The problem would not be with the supply. It would be with your ability to receive. If you would get rid of the small container and get something larger, you could receive so much more. It is the same with God. You may think the economy is too down. I can never afford that house I really wanted. My business will never expand. I don't have the funding. I don't have the right people behind me. No, you have to get rid of that one gallon bucket. Get rid of that small container. The God we serve is a big God. He has an ocean, an unlimited supply. Jesus said, according to your faith, it will be done unto you. It's not according to God. God has all the power, all the resources in the world. It's according to what we believe. To do it today, increase your capacity to receive. Enlarge your thinking by meditating on the word of God. Praise him and magnify him because with God, all things are possible. And he has an unlimited supply. A prayer for today. Father in heaven, I love you and praise you. Thank you for your unlimited supply of everything I need in this life. I open my heart to you and increase my capacity to receive. I choose to take the limits off because I know all things are possible to you. I praise you and thank you for the goodness in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. And the wake-up thought. The scripture says, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. My question is this, do you have your mouth open wide? What are you expecting? Do you believe in increase? Do you go out each day knowing that favor is in your future? Or are you stuck in a rut? If you'll take the limits off of God, if you'll get up every morning expecting far and beyond favor, he won't disappoint you. This is a message of hope, dear friends and spirit. So as you know, I wake up very early and I go out in the middle of the night and I have a special connection with the stars and the moon. And it's interesting, Cliff Falls, all the stars. And in each chapter, he has little stars. Another connection, you and me, Cliff, we gotta talk about that, brother. But somebody sent this to me on Facebook. And I screenshot it and I saved it and I printed it. It's called a Full Moon Release Prayer. Dear God, I am ready to heal. I am ready to let go. Please take my willingness, whether weak or strong, and use it to transform my life. 
Enter me every cell of my being. Cut out all my dysfunction and disease. Remove all compulsion and illuminate my heart. I give you my darkness. Please fill me with your light. Take away what does not serve me for my highest good. May I know at last who I truly am. Amen. I like that. Take away what does not serve me for my highest good. It didn't say take away what does not serve you. God doesn't need anything, dear friends in the spirit. God, Jesus, Muhammad, Allah, Krishna, whoever you believe in, um, they don't need anything. They're here to teach us how we could live heaven on earth, how we could have hope, a message of hope, no matter what is going on in your life. Have a message of hope. Think of others, serve others, right? And, and love, be patient, be kind. And great things will happen. You know, it's not going to be a perfect path, right? In this humanness, we, there's suffering. We know that. And Jesus, as a human, suffered, right? Jesus Christ. Christ was not his last name. I think you guys know that by now, right? Jesus. As a human being, he suffered. But the Christ, the Christ consciousness lives forever and ever and ever. I know Christians believe in Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. It's just a date. It's just a date in our time, in our humanness. But Jesus, the Christ, the Christ consciousness exists, has always existed and will always exist. Jesus was a wonderful man, son of God, that lived 2,000 years ago. And according to what we have learned, he only lived for 33 years. But this earth has been around for billions of years. So do you think that God created the earth for billions of years and didn't care about us until, you know, 33 years, 2,000 years ago when Jesus existed? No. Nah. The Christ consciousness was always here and will always be here. And I love Jesus. And do I believe he's the son of God? Sure. Do I believe I'm the son of God? Sure. Do I believe you're the son and daughters of God? Yes. Jesus just knew. Jesus had that Christ consciousness and he was able to heal and to bless. But dear friends in the spirit, you were able to heal. You were able to bless. You were able to love. You were able to give. So God bless you all. Don't forget to share your faith with family and friends. Cue the spirit and be blessed and a blessing.